Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode, the reboot of FaceTime with Norm. Of course, I'm Norm, and this is being watched and or listened to through both YouTube and on our site at thendysource.com slash C-A-W underground. Uh, for those who are new to this program, this is where I field questions and uh, we'll probably give you updates on what's going on on the forums and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but with a bit of uh, brutal honesty, my own brand of brutal honesty that I like to dish out once in a while. Because I think everybody needs a, a bit of, of a uh, reality check. You know what I mean? Uh, so let's get into the show here. First off, I want to, uh, for my PFW fans... Uh, OWF PFW fans, I want to open the show by announcing that uh, PFW will return to YouTube and uh, it will be posted on YouTube. It's going to be pretty all right. It's going to be about 15, 30 minutes. I don't know how long my account allows for YouTube stuff, but everything that's that's kind of under the indie source domain is it kind of it carries over i think um <clears throat> so yeah that's one big thing is a uh, channel has been created you can look for it under pfwcaw i think it's like youtube.com slash pfwcaw and uh, you can go there and um you'll be able to watch matches and sh full shows and any special things that PFW does as well. Uh, also, subscribe to the CAW Underground channel, and that's the last thing I'm going to say in term of of um, stuff on CU and PFW. So yeah, YouTube, blah blah blah. Let's go into questions. First question comes from the Great D. I'm looking for my pen right now. Oh, there we go. First question from the Great D. Uh, what is one thing you have wanted to do on a show but never could do? Um, DSC versus Sky. I always say this, and I I, I feel like I, I repeat this every time um, I'm asked a question like this. Um, but no, it, it is seriously Sky versus DSC. I wanted to do that so bad, and you can tell how bad I wanted to do it because of the fact that every time a question of this nature is asked, I literally just go right back to. Uh, DSC and Sky. So it's a feud that it's a match that I did, but the feud never started because DSC never submitted his guy for the next game. I think we were on SmackDown versus Raw 07, 08, or something like that. And then uh, we went over to like 09 or 10, or something like that. And DSC never sent in a, a formula. So we we didn't get, you know, the, the storyline that, that was to happen was used for someone else and uh, for another feud somewhat and um, you know I, that that's one thing I wanted to do I've always wanted to do custom name bars as well and I've actually started messing around with After Effects and, and, and Premiere and all that stuff if I can just find a way to get Premiere to save my videos and render them without shutting off my computer completely then <laughs> I, I will probably use more Adobe uh, Premiere and Photoshop and all that stuff and try my hand at it. Uh, what show do you miss? I miss DWL. DWL was one of the first, well, it wasn't the first, one of the first fantasy CAW shows I watched back on ODQ. No but it was uh, one of probably two or three leagues that inspired me to start my own league after, uh, I think it was like VFW or VWF or something like that. A very old league. It was a fantasy league. I did commentary for, and then I got kicked off for that, and, you know, um, so there you go. Well, yeah. Um, what new show do you like? I don't have a favorite. I will say TCW grabbed my attention during the first part of Destiny 6, so I am going to try to get into that a lot more. I watched an episode of our PW, which um, not bad for the production value that it brings to the table, um, but you know a lot of shows are starting to do that now, and they're starting to 
to up the the ante in terms of production values. Uh, something that I've seen done with leagues like uh, I hate to, <laughs> I really do hate to do this, but with leagues like CCW, CCW was the first league that came to mind. CAWD, um, Merck's old league, I believe it was like NGW or something like that. Uh, those were just great leagues that had great production values. And, uh, you know, that's what I see people doing now. So, um, yeah, RPW and TCW, I guess you could say. TCW actually reminds me of a uh, of a promotion I played on Total Extreme Warfare or Wrestling. Uh, for those who don't know what that is, Adam Ryland, who created uh, Extreme Warfare Revenge, EWR, uh, he went on to make a more somewhat fantasy uh non-fictional world type or fictional non-fictional I'm, I'm i always get confused between the two sometimes um but he made his own like little universe where you know it's not based off of well it might it might be loosely kind of based off of real world wrestling but yeah anyways yeah uh what do you do in real life in real life i manage a bank no um <laughs> i don't manage a bank at all what I do do in real life is I run a website called The Indie Source. I also um, sit on my ass all day and wait for doctor's appointments. Uh, I won't get into the doctor's appointments part, but only one person really knows why I go through these doctor's appointments. Um, I'm not going to tell you who, so you can't go out and find out. Ha! Secrets of Norm hidden away from the rest of CU. Suck it. <laughs> now people are going to bombard my inbox with with like what's wrong with you why do you have to go to doctor's appointments um but no in real life i i manage the site i manage uh caw underground and i i do a bunch of other well not really a bunch of other things but i plan for some other stuff uh all right favorite wrestler overall i will have to say uh it's uh very close between the undertaker and Ted DiBiase. And the reason why I put Ted DiBiase in there around the same class, even though Ted DiBiase did introduce The Undertaker, but um, Ted DiBiase had a, a, a gimmick. Now, everyone always says that Undertaker's gimmick just kind of transcends time. Um, and it never gets old, it never gets stale. But I feel that is wrong. I think what has kept Undertaker on top for so long and why he is a legend is because he sells the stuff and he when he's in the ring he is absolutely the you know he he, he does wonders for a match a match can uh, a match can be uh okay but you're going to remember undertaker's performance from that match the thing with ted dibiase is his gimmick alone which i think was like the archetype for rich snobby hills so any wrestler that has a like aristocrat or snobby rich guy persona in wwe in wrestling period they i believe they owe it all to ted dibiase because he did it before anyone else and he was he was absolutely and someone will probably correct me and say oh you know it was it was other older guys that that kind of paved the way for Ted DiBiase but I, I look at Ted DiBiase as like the top of the food chain when it comes to that gimmick and that style that he had so thank you great D you were uh fabulous I guess I guess you were fabulous uh we're gonna move on to rated who who uh if you don't know who this is by now it, it's it's I I don't know where you what rock you're under but he has he's not only the he's only the guy who suggested the biggest overhaul of cu in the history of caw underground since i took it over ah that was a lot to say kind of uh his first question is a very long one so you might want to hold on to your seats with new members coming every day and with the current process our boards are going through what do you think of this sort of new community that is currently growing at CAW Underground and how do you see 
its future. Um, I think new people joining the forum that probably haven't joined the forum before, um, I think that's great. I think that's absolutely great because that means there are more people who will give feedback to shows and there, there's more people to motivate others to to possibly get into this hobby um, that we call CAW. Some of us take it maybe a little bit too seriously, but, you know, I, I am, um, if, if Nat asked, I probably would have retired by now. No, but... You know, we we need people to to continue this 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 hobby. So um, it's going to be very cool. It's very cool that people are joining, and it's very cool that people are are being active as they're joining, and that more people are going to do. And you know, the trend will continue. The, the cycle will continue as as long as people join the form. So I'm very happy about that. Um, the future of it: more CAW owners, more people watching uh caw and me retiring plain and simple <laughs> me me just kind of sitting back running the forum and not doing pfw or owf or whatever um because i don't need that fucking stress i don't i don't need that stress <laughs> i've been stressed out long enough with owf from beginning to end even coming into PFW, I feel that there is still a little stress there uh, from doing this league. And I, I always say you, you do it for fun. You do it for you. But, you know, when when something becomes stressful, that's when you have to stop. And I was ready to stop OWF until that second win kicked in. <laughs> so there you go. Um, his next question. What is your opinion on the quality of new CAW leagues that are hitting the block. Um, I don't have an opinion on that because I don't really judge too much off of quality. Usually someone's flashy graphics. No. Um, it, you know, it's, 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 it's mixed. Um, some leagues are good. Some leagues do things that you wish you would have thought of doing before them. And, and and I mean that's always how it's it's gonna be. It, it's always going to be that way, um, and that's what I think. They're they're there to push the envelope a little bit more. You know, production values, whether it's in HD or on YouTube or whatever, it is there to push someone else to do better than them. Pretty much. There you go. Uh, last question from Rated. What will PFW bring new in comparison to OWF? Um, nothing. I'm not going to promise like PFW is like a new thing because something that I might do in PFW has probably already been done in OWF or in other leagues. So I can't really say that PFW is going to bring anything new to the table in comparison to OWF. O I mean, PFW is pretty much just a rebranding of OWF. And whether or not things will change. I mean, maybe production will change and production schedules will change a little. But, you know, in terms of storylines and, and matches and stuff like that, you know, there's probably things that have already been done that I probably have or have not seen. And there's nothing I can really do. I mean, there, there's nothing I can really say in terms of what, what it's going to bring new. It's not really going to bring anything new to the table. It's it's going to be there for everyone to watch and hopefully enjoy my brand of CAW. The way I've done it for, I think, now nearly seven years. It's been that long. I'm surprised I've lasted this long. <laughs> Someone put my league out of my mis out of its misery, please. Just put a bullet in. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> please, knock on wood. I live in D.C. I I can't <laughs> I can't say things like that because uh, <laughs> something might actually happen. <laughs> but um, let's move on to the next person. Last bunch of questions comes from um, Undamaged Threat, who helped me out 
creating the YouTube. Uh, well, actually, I created the YouTube, but he he did some of the design uh, for the logo, and he also helped set up the Twitter page. So I do thank him. I do praise him. He is a good man. Stubborn, but a good man. <laughs> That's what we love about UT. Um, first question, what made you dis uh, I can't read now. What made you decide to rebrand the OWF? Um, I miss the days of being like the bottom guy, you know, trying to work his way up the ladder. But the rebranding of OWF, that's what I'm looking, that feel, that's the feel I'm looking for. It's like, oh, it's almost like starting off with a fresh new league, but, you know, you, you get to somewhat encounter the amount of of stress that you would encounter with doing um a league or just starting out with a league so the only difference with this is that it actually i actually bring over a roster from a <laughs> from a possibly popular league with owf which kind of handicaps the whole idea of oh well this is kind of like starting fresh but it is kind of like starting fresh because it's starting from a season one it's not starting from it's not season seven pfw because that wouldn't make sense but it is season one of pfw and it is the roster that you've come to know and love but you know just different names for the belts and shows and all that stuff so but you know just just to to work from the bottom see if this will kind of see how people treat this you know, people have known for a while that, that have been on CAW Underground, they have known the original wrestling federation for X amount of years, or they've come across it and then eventually become fans of it. Um, and this is not me just saying that to, to bullshit people. This actually has happened because I watch, I look at the feedback of these shows and I'm baffled. I am amazed by the, the 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 feedback that the show gets and the amount of it it gets so this is not me just trying to sit here and 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 twiddle your butthole and say hey look you know this is good this is what you need no I, I, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is actual fact um but you know just start from the bottom see if see if people treat this as a new league instead of as you know, OWF being rebranded, even though that's exactly what it is, OWF being rebranded. Uh, next question, what do you think is next for James Dark on OWF slash PFW after his feud with Duel? I don't know. I'm going to leave it at that. I don't know. Who, who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. I mean, I booked the show, but I don't know what's going to happen. Just to save face here and that's possibly spoil anything for next season so booyah uh and while we're at it while we're at it with sky defeated at summer slambery six who do you think will take on brian james for the owf pfw title i don't know <laughs> i plead the fifth i don't know no actually i seriously don't know i haven't started booking season one of pfw yet um it's gonna happen sometime within the next like couple weeks because the show starts back up in october october 4th to be precise um so i don't i don't exactly know where like i mean the obvious feud and the obvious outcome that we know that is probably going to kick off the season or that's really going to be talked about in pfw season one is Arkin versus Rick Rancid. That is a given because of the fact that it's been posted on the wire. That that is something that even when you saw the the the, the scene during Summer Slambury Six. Oh, spoiler if you haven't seen it. Um, but when you you look at that point after the match between Rick Rancid and Arkin, you know it's kind of obvious that okay, well this feud is not over yet, and that. We're going to have something to kind of look forward to 
in the next season. Uh, you're not really clear on what happens with James Stark Duel. You're not really clear on what happens with the, the, the OWF PFW title. You're not clear on who who's the next challenger, like UT is asking and all that stuff. So I don't know yet. You really won't know until October, to be honest. You really won't know until October when you see it play out in front of you. There you go. Uh, do you want to see my version of the Normster CAW? It's much better than yours. Actually, I would like to see that because the last time UT did uh, a CAW, he kind of did his own version of one of my, my guys. Well, it was of Normster, actually. Uh, he put, he shaved an N into the side of Normster's head. And I literally cracked up for hours and hours. Actually, not even hours. Just It was like 30 minutes, maybe. Maybe 10, 15. Maybe 30 minutes. But it was really funny. <laughs> and I, I, I enjoyed having that good laugh. <laughs> uh, were you surprised that DSC disappeared again? No. And I'm going to tell you why I was more annoyed with DSC's disappearance. And I told, um, now, now I have talked to Vega Man maybe, I don't know, five times now in the past month since DSC's disappearance. So if anyone can thank or can look at the reason why this resurgence is continuing and is happening, you can thank Vegoman because Vegoman came to me and asked me to help him uh, with, you know, either running a form or getting everyone back to to see you to, um, you know, to, to continue this thing. So there you go. Secret unveiled to why the resurgence is happening on CU. Um, but I wasn't surprised. Again, I was more annoyed. And I told Vegaman that it annoyed me that this guy comes back onto CAW Underground and he starts this whole revolution, per se, and then he dips out. He dips out and he, he doesn't come back but for like two weeks or whatever and then he, he comes back. But now he's he's... Not even there. He's not even there. So it, it annoys me because this is something that people did not expect. But I expected. And if I would have said, oh, well, you know, DSC. I, actually, I said it. I absolutely said it on CU. I don't know if anyone can even find the statement. I can't even find the statement right now because I'm recording this. But I said, and it was one of my fears, that he starts something like this, and then, you know, next thing you know, in a month or two, he's gone. That's it. I called this, pretty much. I pretty much called this. I called this happening. I didn't call him creating CAW Nation, but I called him leaving and just kind of dipping out again and probably won't be back until next summer. Well, where, where will he? Uh, I don't know where he'll return to CAW Nation or whatever, and see that kind of nobody is posting there, and then everybody has come back over here. If things are still going all right by then, but still, you know, it, it, it this 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 shit doesn't write itself. This it happened there. It, it happened. It was called. And and if you've known DSC for a while, if you've been around CU enough, you know. Oh well, you know. DSC leaves, then he'll come back after the Mexican mafia stops kidnapping people of unimportance or whatever. And then that fucking happens. So, no, I wasn't surprised at all. If there was someone that you would like to see back on the CU forums, who would it be? Chris Chambers. Um, me and him are pretty cool. Um, Chris Chambers is one guy. Actually, I would love to see a lot of the, the some of the older guys. I have Joey Law. Of course, his indie knowledge is is great, and uh, he's a he's a good commentator. I would love to to get back in contact with him, and I would like to see him around the forums, and hopefully, maybe a return of PWH a little bit, <laughs> maybe a PWH return. Um, 
on top of that, uh, like I said, Chris Chambers. Chris Chambers is a really cool guy. I don't know how many people have actually talked to Chambers from like before we we started this resurgence with CU. But Chris Chambers used to actually co-host this very show. This is for people on YouTube as well. That's why I'm kind of going into this. But um, Chambers used to co-host this show with me, and we used to call it the 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 brown sugar and dark chocolate hour or whatever because we would just sit here he would be on xbox live or whatever and we just sit here for about 30 minutes to an hour shooting shit just shooting shit we didn't we didn't care we we said how we feel and and people um i guess people loved it (laughs) but it was really fun to do that with them and um but now you know i think he's a lot busier with girlfriends and and possible kids who knows um but I, I do talk to him once in a while i do get invited to some of his like parties and everything and and you know we catch up and then you know we don't talk for about another like 50 bajillion months after that so yeah i do miss him though i do miss him miss talking to him a lot um last question of the show and for from undamaged threat from ut uh do you ever think that one day Sky would end his quest for to power on CU? I can I can answer this in a very short way or very long way. I'm going to take the short way, which is no. Actually, I kind of took the long way there, but no, he would never end that quest. As long as Sky has not become admin or mod or whatever admin mostly. Because I think that's where he that's what he's aiming for. Um, he's always going to want to power while he's on CU. So, yeah. I would like to thank everybody who uh, submitted questions. All three of you. The Great D, Undamaged Threat, and Rated. Uh, thank you guys very much for your questions. If anyone was offended by anything I said during this podcast or this, uh, this thing, this show, um, go fuck yourself. Otherwise... Thanks again for tuning in to FaceTime with Norm. Uh, October 4th, PFW starts. Go visit our Twitter and, um, of course, our YouTube page. Well, you're, all, you're probably already on the YouTube page right now. But visit our YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube so you can get updates on when exclusive matches, interviews, even shows like this are posted on YouTube. Because even though this is an audio show, we will post it on YouTube so you can listen to it. On YouTube, I've said YouTube way too much, but I'm really selling it. Yeah, I am pumped up. Probably will cut this out. No, I won't. Anyways, um, (laughs) subscribe to us on YouTube so you can get so you can get all the updates from exclusive matches, uh, possibly full shows, and other special features that we'll post here on this channel. Visit our website at theindysource.com/slash caw underground link is probably on this video and in the description below you can't see that i'm pointing down at the description but i'm pointing down at the description box like us dislike us i don't care uh just do stuff uh also follow us on twitter if you have a twitter you do the tweeting you do all that stuff follow us on twitter twitter twitter.com slash the indie source. The indie source. No, that's my. No, don't don't go there. Go to CAW Underground. It's at twitter.com slash CAW Underground. I got really excited there. That I thought I was doing a podcast for my site. <laughs> so the two. If you do want to go to the indie source and and like our Facebook and as well as Twitter, you can go there as well. Uh, I'll put links and everything in the description, so you can follow that as well if you want. That's totally an optional thing, but please do follow us on Twitter and Facebook for CAW Underground and uh, join our forums, TheIndieSource.com. Once again, TheIndieSource.com slash CAW Underground. I'm Norm. Thank you once again for tuning in, and I will see you next time for Episode 2.